What's going on guys? I have another preview video here today as I'm looking at week 2 in the 2012 NFL season and today I'll be talking about the week 2 matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and my Minnesota Vikings who will be playing at Lucas Oil Stadium, the Vikings first game on the road and it's Andrew Luck's first game at home in Indianapolis. So it should be interesting as two young quarterbacks square off. Neither of these teams really picked to do a whole lot this year but if the Minnesota Vikings come out with a victory then they will be 2-0 on the season as they prepare for their week three matchup against the San Francisco 49ers and so I did watch the Vikings game of course last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars and Christian Ponder started off pretty slow and shaky like he did last year he looked a lot like 2011 Christian Ponder but he turned it around he started setting his feet more he had time to throw the ball against that good Jaguars defense who was without Daryl Smith and Derek Cox and uh, Ponder threw very well in that game 20 to 27 for 270 yards and largely aided by Percy Harvin and his run after the catch ability both with his agility, speed, and his strength. And then on the Indianapolis side of the ball in offense, I really wasn't all that impressed with what they did. I mean, Andrew Luck was under pressure a lot against Chicago, and so I can understand his inaccuracy in that game. He just completed over 50% of his passes. But I wasn't really all that impressed with the way he was throwing the ball. It seemed like he was really comfortable, though, with Kobe Fleener. He threw a lot of very accurate passes to him, whereas his passes to Reggie Wayne, Wayne really had to work for his catches in that game. He had nine catches for 135 yards, and I think he could have a big game against the Vikings who have a knack for letting big play receivers and big name receivers to go and have big days against them and the Vikings don't do a very good job of taking a certain player out of the game all the time so I could expect Reggie Wayne to be Andrew Luck's security blanket this week as well as Kobe Fleener because the Vikings don't have the greatest pass coverage linebackers. I expect them to test Jasper Brinkley on early downs before they get into the nickel and they have Aaron Henderson out there who isn't uh, like a great pass defending linebacker but Brinkley is definitely the match advantage where the Indianapolis Colts have it with their tight ends with uh, Kobe Fleener and I expect him to get a lot of targets this week. Him and Reggie Wayne were the two leading receivers last week with 135 yards for Wayne and 82 to Fleener and I'm not really sure what all to expect from the running game from the Indianapolis Colts. They did have 48 yards rushing last week from Donald Brown. The Vikings don't have the same run defense they did a few years ago when they had Pat Williams and EJ Henderson but it is still pretty good. They held MJD to under 100 yards. He didn't bust off any big plays but he was very consistent last week, but Donald Brown is obviously not an MJD, and so I can see the Vikings having a good day against the Indianapolis ground game and making this offense more one-dimensional. And a lot of what this game is going to come down to is Andrew Luck versus the Vikings pass rush and secondary. Now last week, Eugene Monroe silenced Jared Allen, not even a tackle on the day. He did have a sack that was called back after an offsides penalty. Jared Allen thinks that he was not offsides, but it looked very close to me. And so I expect Jared Allen to try to go out this week can really make more of an impact, but I would also watch out for Brian Robinson, who was a very underrated defensive end, and he played well last week. He didn't get any sacks, but he was getting some tackles, and he did a pretty good job on the day overall. And Chad Greenway had one of his better games in a long time. I thought he had a down year last season, but he started off hot this year with 13 tackles total in week one. He also had a couple of pass deflections down the road in that game in the fourth quarter. And I want to see how the Vikings do in pass coverage this week. They looked very much like in past years last week against Blaine Gabbert. A lot of open throws that Blaine Gabbert was able to take underneath. No real big plays down the field other than that deep pass to Cecil Shorts. And speaking of that play, Cecil Shorts beat Chris Cook. And Chris Cook got beat a couple of times last week, but I expect him to step up this week against Reggie Wayne. Or I'm hoping he does at least. I'm still not sold on him. He looked pretty good last year, a little shaky last week. I thought he had his head turned around too many times and he wasn't eyeing the football and wasn't able to make any plays on the ball. I think he may have had a few deflections recorded last week, but the plays he got beat on show that he still has some things to work on if he wants to be the Vikings number one cornerback. But I think if the Vikings can pressure Andrew Luck this week continually throughout the game the way Chicago did and make him throw some inaccurate passes and don't really let him fall into a rhythm at all in the first half so he can get comfortable throughout the rest of the game, I think the Vikings have a good chance of getting the victory in this one because I didn't see a lot of things from Indianapolis that week that really impressed me. So I want to see the Vikings take some chances against the rookie quarterback and see if they can pressure him and make him throw some interceptions that can turn into points for the Minnesota Vikings. And now looking at the Vikings offense, I liked what I saw from Christian Ponder last week. Of course, I covered that a little bit 
earlier. And Adrian Peterson is also back. I expect him to play just as much as he did last week. He was very impressive. And this run defense from Indianapolis is definitely not as good as Jacksonville's. And I expect Adrian Peterson to have a good day on the ground and possibly take over this game for the Vikings offense and make the day a little bit easier for Christian Ponder. But it all depends on how well Andrew Luck plays on the other side and whether or not the Vikings have to pass to keep in this game. And I also want to see what type of team the Vikings play as this week because they're definitely a better team at home. But if they can come up to a hot start against the Indianapolis Colts and we get a turnover early or they can just establish a solid drive when they get the football in the first quarter, I think the Vikings could come away with a victory in this game and I expect them to. I'm predicting a Vikings victory this week by a score of 30-20 to because I'm not really big on Indianapolis' defense and I think the Vikings have a much more balanced offense this week and Adrian Peterson can cap off some drives and score some touchdowns in the red zone just like he did last week. And I'm also watching for the Vikings to spread the ball around and hopefully get to some more targets other than Percy Harvin this week because I know the Colts are going to be going after him. I expect the Colts to double cover Percy Harvin a lot and to really focus on taking him out of the game which opens up Kyle Rudolph, the Vikings second year tight end who I have, I'm still expecting to have a very big year. He had a pretty good week one, had a few grabs in that game including a big one down the stretch. And so one of the things I'm looking for this week, I want to see how the defenses minimize the play of the star players in each offense. I think Andrew Luck will be looking for Reggie Wayne early and often, so it's up to the Vikings to cover him well, maybe put an extra guy on him if they want to, so that Andrew Luck doesn't have that security blanket of his veteran receiver, and he has to go to Donnie Avery and Kobe Fleener, and we'll see if Austin Colley plays. He's doubtful. I doubt he plays this week. And then for the Vikings, I want to see if they can get Percy Harvin established once again. I, I think the Colts are going to be really focused on taking him out of this game and making Ponder beat him with his arm with Kyle Rudolph and Michael Jenkins. And Jenkins and Aroma should do actually played very well last week. Jenkins had three catches for 45 yards, and Aroma should do had three catches for 61 yards. And so if the Colts do effectively take Percy Harvin out of the game and minimize the yards he gets after the catch, I'm looking at Devin Aroma should do stepping up as a wide receiver as well as Kyle Rudolph in the tight end spot, hopefully taking some attention away so Percy Harvin can get open. And so Adrian Peterson can gash that defense for some big plays. And so once again, my prediction for this game is a 30-20 victory from the Minnesota Vikings. But if Reggie Wayne gets established early and Andrew Luck looks better than he did last week, it could be a very different outcome. So let me know your thoughts on this game, guys, between the Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time.